it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today is a fun one and we do love a fun technique that really takes very little skill and we get excellent results and that is today. I have been meaning to try this technique for so long and it's here. Now, I'm using paint today, any brand is going to work. I invested a little while back in some of the Dina Wakely paints, mainly because I love those paints. I love the thickness of them, I love the texture, I love the bottles are perfect handy size for my storage. There's just the right amount for me, uh, but I do also have some other brands. The yellow one is from Kmart here in New Zealand. But all you have to do is pop little dots all over your page. There is no rhyme, no reason, no size, no shape. It doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter if you smear them. It doesn't matter if you kind of get uh, little fingerprints on your page. It doesn't matter if your dots are round. It doesn't matter if you accidentally dribble them. It doesn't matter. And that is the main thing. I do find that you don't need much paint for this at all. These dots here are actually very, very little. You can experiment with color palettes. I just kind of went for gold and put whatever colors I felt like putting on. It is good if you start off with a piece of paper that is slightly bigger than what you need because I find you tend to get a little bit of kind of what I've called drag space up the top, but I mean, just experiment. So I decided to stop here for this one. I'm going to use a ruler. This happens to be the Tim Holtz design ruler, but any flat surface, even a piece of cardboard folded over is going to do the trick here. And all you do, is drag it down and then look at these cool results. I love this. I've been meaning to do this for so long. I saw this somewhere, a TikTok video or Instagram reel or somewhere. I have no idea where I saw it, but uh, this is an old, old technique and this is often done on canvases. And I thought, why not change this and make it into our card making? So this is another one. I'm going to start off with some purples, some blues. Uh, I think here the key is to, you really don't need a lot of paint. Like these don't need to be big paint blobs. They really just need to be the tiniest little dot of paint. That's something else I like about these little uh, paint tubes here. I love the colors that she has. This one here that I'm using at the moment is night. It is actually like a very, very, very dark blue. And I absolutely love it. It's not black, but it's really dark. Uh, and so I'm going to start the scrape and I love it. So you do get that little bit of drag space up the very top where you kind of get a little bit more white. But of course, I am going to show you how I end up making these into cards. Now this Kmart uh, paint here, the yellow one, it has a really big opening to the hole actually, uh, the flip top one, and the shapes aren't perfect, <laughs> but it does not matter. And this is my favorite thing about this. It's very hard to get this wrong. Put dots all over your page and then swipe down and gorgeous every time. I didn't have not one of these that I created and I created a lot of these and there was not one that I didn't like. Now at this point, this one here had the most paint left over on my ruler. So I thought, why not see if I can use this up and just scrape it down another page. So I scraped this down and I love this. I could have stopped here, but I wanted to experiment because I have done it with uh, ink when you kind of scrape across um, onto some glossy cardstock. So I took this away for a second and then I was thinking of that. And when I did that, I made the plaid backgrounds um, with the glossy cardstock, like photo paper. And that's what I was thinking about when I was going the other way across here. So I just you just try it out. Just give it a go. Give it a whirl and see what happens. And so I did. And then I scraped a few times and I scraped a few more. And then when I started to lose the other way, I thought, time to stop, Natasha. And so I stopped. And I really like this. It kind of looks plaid. It kind of looks, I don't know, I like it. And so anyway, I decided to stop here for the video. I kept going in real life. The kids joined me and things got crazy, but we loved it. Now, here are the backgrounds. Now, backgrounds are great, but we want to turn these into an actual card. I love all the colors in this one, and I was having serious trouble deciding which ones I actually wanted to turn into cards, because if I turned all four of these into cards, it makes my videos much longer, and I try and keep them shortish. So, we're going to start off, and I thought, I guess this, like, kind of 
solid background. The plaid background is uh, one that I thought I should turn into a card because the others are pretty obvious to me and it felt really easy and so I prefer to give it a little bit of a challenge and thought I would use this one. Now this one is super easy in my mind because with such a solid background you need something really crisp and clean and clear to add on top. Now these are the Lacy Edges from uh, Pink Free Studios and I, this is perfect. So I have die cut out two of this one here, exactly the same one. And this can just add so much to your project. This is the big happy birthday to you from Lawn Fawn, obviously. And I have die cut out one of those too. Now the lace, you could actually use real lace. And I think that would look gorgeous. And it would also add other textures onto your card which I love doing I love using fabric in card making in fact I bought that fabric tape uh, the other day from 49 and market and I have got another project in mind that I'm going to be using that for so it reminded me of all of this however we do want to do some things to step this up rather than just sticking it down I am going to start with sticking it down because that's the first step. I am taking a makeup sponge and some liquid glue. This is the Ranger Multimedium. This is just a really easy way, a cheap way that I can adhere everything down onto my background and know that I'm getting really good adhesion. I want everything to be stuck in place and I never want anything to pop up uh, by the time it goes through the mail. So I pop everything, uh, pop the little sponge into the glue and pop it onto the back there, get this in place and then press it down nice and solid once I have pretty much got it even uh, on both sides. Doesn't have to be perfect but I think I have it roughly centered. Pop some on the second one and pop it on the top or the bottom depending on which way around you look at it. And then I'm going to do the exact same with the happy birthday word. This is a gorgeous big die. I've done a few videos using this one. You can cut this down. The reason that I got this one is because you can use it as it says happy birthday to you. You can cut the to you off the bottom and just have happy birthday. You can also just separate the word birthday or separate the word happy and you could just have a little stamped happy above it and then the big word birthday. I love big versatile dies like this and I think if you're going to invest in one of them, we want to have lots of ways to use them. So I actually have a video on all the different ways you can use this die, I'm pretty sure. Um, right, so now once we have got these adhered down, I'm going to use some of that same glue and glue this down onto my card base. My card base is four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, and it's made out of 110 pound cardstock. Then once I give the glue a minute or so to grab on nicely, I'm going to move on to the next stage of this card. Now you could absolutely leave it here, but I am going to keep going for a little bit. I'm going to add some glossy accents to the letters. Now this is a tiny little bottle of glossy accents. They also come in bigger bottles as well. This is one that I just happened to have. I think this came with a freebie with my order from scrapbook.com. They often have one, if not two freebies that you can add to your cart um, and they come with your order. So I'm going to use up this little bottle too, except it is lasting me forever. Even to do this happy birthday to you, it barely used anything. I couldn't even notice a difference in the level in the bottle. I am then taking some Nuvo glitter. This is just some white kind of sparkly glitter. Any is going to work. And I'm going to pop it on top. And then I'm going to give it some pretty good taps to get off the glitter. Now when I shine this, this is going to be really shiny. You can see some glitter is in between and on the background. So just hold on to your horses, wait till it dries, and we will pop that off when everything is nice and dry and the glue is dry, and we'll give it a little brush with a paintbrush, and that will all disappear. Then we'll be left with that gorgeous, shimmery, shiny sentiment. Right, on to the next one. This one is the Babies stamp set from Honey Bee Stamps, and I, it's something about these. These are super, super cute. I bought out my tri-blend alcohol mark markers. These are from Spectrum Noir, and they have three different uh, colors in one barrel. So three different pens, three different nibs, and this makes life for blending really easy for me. These are definitely my go-to. I find that this definitely cuts out the task of me having to sort through and, you know, find which uh, blends are going to go nicely together, trying to find a light, a medium, and a dark, and this means I don't even have to think about it. I pick up the color that I want, and I automatically have three different shades of that color, so this is my kind of go-to. I've had these for a couple of years now, and I have not run out of a single marker, so that is also a good sign uh, for me. 
the lawn form one on the left is the happy 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 die set and then the hero arts one is the fancy uh, celebrate words fancy dies and I just cut out the birthday from the hero arts one and the happy from the lawn form one just find something that says happy birthday you could use any sentiment at all that you wanted for these I coloured in my beads, I fussy cut them and then taking this, I think this is a zig pen and uh, this one is such good value. It's less than $2 on scrapbook.com. I actually did the black lines with it on my bumblebee but if you have uh, stamped your image in black then this is the perfect marker to go around the outside and cover all those uh, fussy cutting edges um, when you go around the edges and that makes your fussy cutting look absolutely immaculate even though if you're like me it isn't. <laughs> now I have die cut out three of each of these die cuts, three of the happy and three of the birthday. I just used the same sponge and the same technique to adhere all of these together. If you wanted to, you could pop some double-sided adhesive on the back of the dies, uh, on the back of the die cuts, or before you die cut them out, and then that would just make them like stickers that you could stick together. Now here I was thinking about which background to use. You could make the card go landscape, and I thought about that for just a minute. But I think I'm going to stick with portrait for this one. Portrait seems to be my most uh, common card that gets chosen out of the bunch that I make. The landscape ones go pretty well as well, but I think if anything people lean towards the portrait ones for mine anyhow. Now I'm going to pop this down onto my card base and my little trick where I do all four sides here with some double sided adhesive then I make sure that I pop a tiny little piece in the middle. I take the middle piece fully off and then each one of these side pieces I leave, I pull down just a little tab and I bend it so it's poking out the sides and then this is going to mean that once you have centered your panel on your card front you can move it around, move it around, I'm moving it until it's perfectly even, then I push down in the middle where that exposed adhesive is and I pull out all four of those tabs and you have an absolutely perfectly lined up layer. Those things can sometimes drive me crazy when I have got a wonky layer and I have finished my card. So I found a way that I don't have to worry about that anymore and that little trick seems to do the job. Now I am going to pop these bees up on some foam tape. I'm going to use the same liquid glue to glue down the sentiment, the happy and the birthday. And because the background is so bold, it means that this white sentiment is going to stick out really well and I don't have to do too much to it. If you wanted to, you could add even some uh, embossing, some glittery embossing. You could do the same thing that we did before with some glossy accents and some glitter. Uh, you could just add a little bit of glitter pen, clear glitter pen over top would look really nice as well. But these couple of little bees and their happy birthday. And then I am going to do a couple of little things from here. One is to pop the little kind of flying trail off the back of the bees. I just use a little fine liner pen and make a little trail. I think this is just one of those things that adds to it. Pop it on both bees and then for their little wings, I was thinking about whether I wanted to replace the insides with some acetate, but <laughs> I was running out of time. So I'm going to take the next best option and I'm going to pop some glossy accents on their little wings. Now glossy accents goes on dimensional and it goes on a little bit cloudy. As it dries, it's going to dry completely clear and it will stay dimensional. So it's going to give a really glossy, dimensional, clear finish to whatever you add it to. So that's why I quite like it for the glitter. It kind of looks like raised, um, a little bit of raised bump over my sentiment, but with glitter in it as well. Now if you get any little uh, air bubbles, I suggest you take a pin and I just clean it between my fingers every time and pop all those little bubbles so that you have a beautifully clear crystal clear little bit of glossy accents on your project now these are the two finished projects for today i am going to quickly take this brush give it a good swipe over this didn't take long to dry at all um, I would probably wait another few hours before it went through the post uh, if I would put it in an envelope but it was dry to the touch within around half an hour for me so I just put a really nice thin layer of that glossy accents on and it is held onto that glitter and none of it is going anywhere which is important. Anyhow I hope you have enjoyed today's video I hope you give this one a go come and join our Facebook page Come Crafting with Natasha and share your versions of it other than that I look forward to seeing you in the next video.